All right, folks. Greetings out there in YouTube land. This is Scott with the Game Audio Institute, and we are coming right back at you with more scripting shorts. And let's just get right into what we're going to talk about, which is occlusion. We're going to talk about how to be able to occlude audio signals that are hidden uh, in, you know, behind walls and things like that. And this might be a little bit of a multi-parter, but we'll don't, I don't think it'll take too long. But uh, when we last left off, we were sort of talking about using snapshots, mixer snapshots, in order to be able to do some of this stuff. And we can continue to use snapshots in this particular case, but it might help to have a little bit of a guide in what occlusion actually is. So um, just to bring people up to speed, take a look over here. So what we have here in this particular case is a, effectively, occlusion is a little bit more of a 2D effect in a 3D sort of space. So the idea ends up being is, is that you have some sounds that are already normally full range if you're inside the space, but if you completely close it off with a door or a wall or whatever like that, it basically ends up filtering the audio. So it would be like if you were outside and there was a big rainstorm happening or something like that, and you came inside this you know, room and you close the door, what happens is that removes the high frequencies, but you can still hear the audio. So we're gonna basically do a kind of thing kind of like that. And it will introduce us to a little bit, a little bit of scripting, not too much more uh, than what we were already doing for the snapshot. But there will be some some important things that we kind of have to make sure that the the system understands. So, um, without any further ado, let us go and uh, return to the thrilling days of going back to Unity in our scripting shorts project. Okay, folks, uh, let's go check this all out now inside Unity and see what we've got going on. I had to do a lot of preparation actually in the meantime uh, between the very very quick. Uh, sort of uh, demonstration that I just did and uh, and what you're seeing right now. So I definitely had to like, you know, create a few objects to sort of close off the space. Uh, I added a little nice little radio here. It has an audio source, of course, um, as you can see right there. And the audio source is set to 3D, as you can see as well. And um, now what happens is that this door will have a little bit of an animation associated with it. So when the player come, kind of comes nearby, they will trigger the animation on the door and the door will go up and then they will go in. And that's going to actually change our occlusion uh, so that we're in the room and then it'll be unoccluded at that point, basically. Um, so a couple of things to mention is that sometimes when you put reverb, well, especially when you put like um, things that are here, you might end up having situations where the sound will go through a reverb zone if you happen to have reverb zones. So you want to make sure that you, if you have reverb zones and you don't want the radio sound to go through the reverb zone, you'll want to click this bypass reverb zones uh, situation in order to be able to deal with that. So that'll be uh, pretty useful for that. So now, pretty much basically what we want to do is sort of set things up in our mixer and uh, go check the mixer here. And over there in the mixer, what we want to do is add ourselves a group for our radio. That makes sense. So we will highlight our master. We'll click the plus sign. That will create a group directly under the master. We're going to call this one radio. And that will be that. And now what we want to do is go find our radio object. We added our audio source to. Click our dot and basically now what we can do is on the on the uh, main mixer window here we can basically select radio and that will be the radio uh, the sound will go through the radio uh, on there so now uh, we have our snapshots and uh, our snapshot in this particular case you know I've actually lowered the footsteps a little bit from what we had before um, and I've also deactivated the reverb uh, room and the reverb zones and stuff because they were causing a lot of interference uh, for this particular demonstration. So in order to create our occluded kind of thing, remember our, our, occlus our occlusion effect is basically a 2D effect. It's not really a 3D effect. So it can actually be done directly on the mixer before we ever get into the sort of spatialization part. Uh, so basically what happens is we're gonna click add effect. That effect is going to be a low pass. You can kind of barely see it there at the edge. And we're going to basically create a cutoff frequency of let's say, well, remember for this, this is going to be our in-room one, which will be the unoccluded one, actually. So we want our, our cutoff frequency to be 
pretty much non-existent, you know, just no cutoff at all. Now, for the other one, the one that says snapshot, which would basically be occluded, and if you want, you can rename these kinds of things. It might not be a bad idea, right? So you can say occluded and then in room. So basically what happens in this particular case, it will turn down our cutoff frequency to pretty dramatic, say something around 700 hertz or so. Uh, you want to make sure that you can really hear the difference between the unoccluded and the occluded, and the occluded versions, okay? So that's basically it. When you are in the room, you will be unoccluded and you'll be able to hear the radio at full frequency range and stuff like that. And then if you're outside of the room, it's going to be mostly this situation, okay? So um, in order to be able to do the movement of the door, I actually had to create a script to trigger the door movement. And uh, there are some special kinds of considerations. So let's go take a look at that script um, and, and how it works right now. And also then how we can uh, alter it uh, for our purposes. Anyway, so what the deal is, is this case is um, we are... We need to definitely say the Unity Engine dot audio. We want to do snapshots and stuff like that. But let's just take a look and see how things are already set up to begin with. Uh, there's an animator uh, a component that basically is doing the animation on the on the thing. And so essentially, what ends up happening is you have to automatically disable the animator. Otherwise, it'll just start playing even if you don't tell it to. It, that's unfortunate, but it just it's it's, it's on automatic. And uh, so I have to actually disable the animator uh, so that I can make sure the door doesn't just automatically go up by itself, essentially. Then on the on trigger enter, I have to basically make sure that the thing that's entering the trigger area that I've set up and the trigger area is basically just a little bit of a it basically I created a box collider um, just in front of the door in the, in the area of the doorway. So when the player gets reasonably close to the door, the door will go back up. Um, so the, uh, the idea ends up being is, is, is that's basically happening. Now, in a lot of cases, you might not necessarily have to do this exact, you know, kind of checking. But because of our footsteps and because we kind of decided to have, uh, you know, the player contacting the ground and the ground actually has the kind of thing that will actually trigger these on-trigger enter statements by themselves... I need to have a second check to make sure that what is contacting that area is in fact the player object, the object that is tagged player, which is that uh, player armature object that we've talked about before. Okay, so that's the idea. It's going to basically look and make sure that the player is the one that's triggering the, tra the, the thing, and then it'll go on. And as you can see, I put a little uh, you know print statement saying you know hey you triggered the door and that sort of stuff. And you can see then I, I, I uh, um, enable the door animator and then I play the sound or I play the animation. So now we want to go into the transitions uh, for the thing. Now we have actually done the correct thing of saying using Unity Engine.audio, but we do need to actually declare a couple of other variables. So in that case, what we're gonna be doing is the old public audio mixer snapshot, just like we had done last time that we were doing this. So public audio mixer snapshot, and this will be occluded. And then this will be open or something like that. I'll say public audio mixer snapshot open. Okay, so that's basically going to be that. And what we're going to do now is on on trigger enter. Remember, enter is the unoccluded one that we're going to go to, right? Because we're going to be opening the door. Therefore, the radio will be fully exposed and ready to to be played at full frequency. So what we'll do in this case is say, this is gonna be open dot transition to, that's the thing. And we give ourselves a float value of how long we want that transition to be. It's pretty safe to just do it at one, one second. Uh, the animation length is actually exactly at one second. So if you wanted to make it, you know, exactly the same as the animation, that's pretty much a way to do it. So we're gonna do that. And copy. And then down over here, we're going to do the same thing over here, but instead it's going to be occluded transition to, which is what it's actually going to start up out with is the occluded state. So occluded transition to, and we save our results. And then we've got to go back into Unity and drag everything back over and just make sure we don't have any weird issues. We seem to have a weird issue, looks like it. What's the deal? Uh... 
ah, and I know what it is. I typed the wrong transition. <laughs> That's what it was. Hang on, transition. Transition. There's what? There's two more characters that I don't have. I have one. I have one extra character. Too many S's. All right. So got to check your got to check your type typos. So that's the deal. Uh, okay. So now should be good. See what happens. And we're good. All right, so now let's go check our doorway and door. And our doorway object is basically where I where I've set all this sort of stuff. Um, you can check a look and see that the collider. If you want to take a look at it a little bit in the game view, see the, the collider sort of extending slightly outward from the uh, the area. So you know when the player gets close to the door, the door will open. Um, and the idea in this case is that that's going to do the trigger door. And you can see that this says audio mixer snapshot and the other audio mixer snapshot. So the occluded, remember, is going to be our occluded snapshot state. And also that's what we're starting with, in fact, right? And then we want to go over here to the in-room snapshot for testing data. So that pretty much gets us exactly what we need to be. And let's go check this out out inside the game uh but we also do need to make sure and we also i think pretty sure we are did this yeah we did that okay cool all right cool so we're gonna check this out it may be a little bit rough on the audio because there's some uh dull um uh what's it a doppler effect on the thing so uh i usually do not like doppler in unity it really sounds artificial and weird um so i usually tend to take the doppler levels down to nothing so that i don't have that happening um, all right, so here we go. Try it out. For the next 30 minutes, the and there's our dragnet. You will travel step by step on the side of the law to an actual case from official police files. Okay. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment. This is the story of your police force in action. Now, Yay. did you notice what happened? Yep. So... What happened in this particular case is something that we're going to have to deal with next time. So what it is is basically I'm in the room, but the room closed. So because what happened is, is I walked out of the trigger area to control the door and the door closes. But now all of a sudden it goes back to being occluded, which is it's exactly behaving exactly as it's supposed to, to do that. But I'm now in the room, right? So... That's going to set up a whole nother thing. So we will see you next week on that situation. All right, folks, there you go. Uh, continued story. You know, we, we're going to you know, leave our hero on a cliffhanger at this point in time. But we will solve this problem, I swear, uh, next week. So we'll see you there. Um, obviously, if you have any interest in, in uh, finding out more about what we do, you can go our, to our, our website and find out stuff. Uh, if you want to back us at all on Patreon, you get access to any of these scripts that I'm happening to do. Um, they're generally fairly well annotated so that they uh, they actually show a lot of, you know, of the behind the scenes and explains why things are working the way that they they do um anyway like share comment subscribe if you know if you have any suggestions of as to the next thing that we'd like to do do you'd like to see covered in the unity audio scripting short series please let us know in the comments uh and in that case i just hope this helps you get your game audio on take care